progress is being made. So yesterday I got the uh, cylinder back. You can see here we have not six, but seven pistons. So let's kind of talk about what's going on here. You guys saw I tore this thing down and number six had a little bit of rust in it. And in the last video I mentioned that we were likely going to have to get a sleeve for this thing. So I actually had one on order, but while this was at the machine shop, we were trying a couple different things. And uh, at first it was looking like it was really bad, but we tried no 0.25 piston, so quarter mil over, and it wasn't quite enough. There was still one spot in number six that uh, that just wouldn't clean up. But luckily, some uh, some 050, some half mil over pistons actually were good, so we're able to avoid having to get a sleeve for this thing, which that's awesome. And some uh, half a mil over pistons were perfect, so this thing has a fresh bore in it, fresh hone. The cylinders are just oiled right now. I still have to clean them up because what I'm going to work on now is repairing this uh, series of cracks in the fins. So the top fin, from what uh, from what I gather, they were just trying to pry against the the jug here to get the head off, and you know the previous owners, who knows just how how bad it went. So we have three spots here. There's a little ding here where it was starting to crack. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of straighten that out and uh, burn that back in, and then we have one little guy right here. So, so yeah, there's no damage on the lower fins or any, anywhere else. And uh, I can go ahead and get this fixed up, take the die grinder and get it all cleaned up, make it look new, and then eventually we will be painting this. The cylinder here we had, I had aluminum oxide blasted and that was just to help promote better paint adhesion. I know I could do vapor blasting or vapor honing and I'm gonna do that on certain areas, but this was just purely paint adhesion, so didn't want it to be too smooth. And now we have a good clean working surface. So let's get back to work. So one more thing I wanted to address. Yes, I do have a factory service manual. I have many, as you can see. So there, uh, there were a lot of comments in the last video about tearing this thing down. And unfortunately, the, one of the very early things I did in the video was remove the valve cover without pulling the tack drive and I have brought shame to my family and my family for seven generations now and you guys have ripped me apart on that one. So you guys had assumed also because the way I took out the camshafts that I didn't have a manual, I wasn't doing it by the book when a lot of people failed to realize that the engine was locked up and I, I couldn't go by the book. That's why I didn't see it a lot. So. You have to understand kind of why I was doing that, and, and I thought I explained it clearly, but a lot of people miss that detail, so, you know, please uh, please go easy on me. But with Tack Drive, yes, I admit, I made a mistake. It was early on, and hopefully through this series, I will regain your guys' trust if you if you plan to stick with me. So, anyway, with that being said, I will, uh, I will end my rant, and we will get back to work here. Alright, first test spot went really well. I'm using a uh, 4043 filler rod and then I've got the uh, TIG set up at like 120 amps. Not that I'm getting anywhere that high, but um, yeah, so far that looked really well. One pass to clean it up and then just started filling and wasn't too bad. So these are just going to take a bunch of filler rod. I'm not going to do any kind of like patch panel or anything like that. I'm just going to build them up with, with pure filler rod and I think we'll be good to go. So. I'll probably do a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there, let the head cool off a little bit, and then just go back through. So it's going to take a while, but today is just going to be a nice welding meditation day. So for anyone interested, I'm actually using, uh, I have an older transformer machine. I have a Miller Synchrowave 180, so no pulse, anything like that. Very limited adjustment. So it's taken me a little while to kind of figure out how to weld aluminum, but getting better and better. 
but this, you know, as well as that went, I'm pretty confident here. So anyway, let's get back to it. Well, that wasn't too bad. The cylinder welded pretty easily, I should say, and really wasn't much, uh, much like debris or, or anything coming out of that. So as of now, it is time to get the die grinder out and start making this look like it never happened. So that should be pretty cool. I did do a test uh, test session over here. I, I filed it down. It was a little bit low, and it looks like it's going to be good. There's no real porosity in it, and it will just vanish. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get to work and get the headphones on and start sculpting. This thing is looking good. I have the repair on this little section right there, and then we had three broken sections, uh, like there, there, and there. Yeah, so three broken sections, and I, you saw I just filled that with weld. I didn't do any like uh, plates in here. I just actually filled it with the filler rod, and then I've spent a little bit of time sanding it and shaping it to make it look like it was factory cast. And it was kind of, you know, I have to find that balance of not going too overboard because, you know, I don't want it to look too perfect because it's a, it's a factory cast piece and there are imperfections. So I want to try to retain that. So it's not perfect, but it looks exactly how it should. And it's kind of fun geeking out on that stuff, but really happy with it. You know, kind of pat on the back, good quality repair. No JB Weld in this thing. Now, next up, I just need to clean this thing really well and we'll get it in paint and then I can kind of move up to the cylinder head and there I'm probably going to find that all the valves need to be replaced and it's going to be a big black hole, well 20, 24 black holes of money, but uh, yeah, I got to do what I got to do. But anyway, really happy that we have made some progress with this and the fact that I have a lot of the parts for this engine already in hand and then coming back to me. I've got the uh, tensioners, all that stuff coming back from Burt at Six Center. And uh, I have a lot of other stuff for this thing. I have all the bearings, all the seals. I've, I've, got, I've got everything. So just got to find the time to work on it. Okay, before we go, I just wanted to give a warm welcome as well as a big thank you to all the new subscribers that I've uh, picked up from that last video for the CBX here. That video is just killing it and just over outperforming all the other videos I've done ever. So whatever I did right or whatever I did wrong in that one, I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys like what you see on the channel. I put out a lot of content on just 
all Japanese bikes, 70s, 80s stuff, custom builds, or as you see here, we're doing a restoration on this bike. So hopefully you guys find the, uh, the videos I put out, you know, somewhat informative and, and somewhat entertaining. A mixture of both would be great. But anyway, the next video you're going to hopefully see on the CBX is going to be lower end. I need to go ahead and get the cases over here, start cleaning those, get them vapor honed, and then start reassembly. Like I said, I have a lot of the parts for this thing already, so we should be making some progress. But we've got some other customer work and, and, and uh, service work in between. So you see the CX here. i got other stuff sprinkled around. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Again, welcome aboard. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it, all that stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.